Hi, this is Jeff Belyun. This tutorial demonstrates how to add particle trails to balls in sports videos using After Effects and Particle Illusion. However, the tracking and rotoscoping techniques included here can be adapted for use in other situations when you need to precisely match particle motion to the motion of an element in a piece of footage rather than to the motion of an entire composition layer. The method demonstrated here requires patience and determination. Patience to take the time needed to get it right, and determination to get through the first few attempts, which can be frustrating. However, practice does indeed make perfect, and in my case, I was able to successfully track and rotoscope 37 separate clips, each between 2 and 4 seconds long, without running naked or screaming, or naked and screaming into the street. And believe me, I'm not the only one who was grateful for that. Let's start out in After Effects. To save a little bit of time, I've imported the source footage and created a composition to match that will be the comp used for final render. This project is destined for DVD, and I am using DV as the source video, so the choice of final composition size was easy. I used a standard NTSC DV preset. The footage and the composition both use non-square pixels, which are much more hip than square pixels, by the way but this video has to be the background image in Particle Illusion, which only understands square pixels. So I need a composition that can be used to export a version of the video that can be used in Particle Illusion. Creative Cow Master Aaron Rabinowitz has provided a technique for creating a comp that will resize DV footage so that it can be used in Particle Illusion and other programs that only understand square pixels. He created an outstanding tutorial on the subject for his Particle Illusion Fusion DVD, so I won't rehash his most excellent non-mathematical gyrations here. I've adapted his method just a little bit to suit this tutorial, but as you'll see, it works. One way to create a new composition is to drag the footage you want to be in the comp to the new composition icon in the project panel. By doing that, you create a composition with the exact dimensions, frame rate, and duration of the footage. So now I'll drag the source footage to the icon to create the new comp. But since this is DV footage, using it to create a new comp will create a DV sized composition. I don't want to use non-square pixels in Particle Illusion, so I need to change the comp settings. Go to Composition, Composition Settings. I'll rename it to Exporting Square. I know that I'll need to create square pixel versions of non-square pixel footage quite often, so I've created a preset for this kind of composition. I'll select the preset, and then we'll examine the settings. Width is set to 648 pixels, and height remains at 480 pixels. The pixel aspect ratio, or PAR, is set to square pixels. For NTSC footage, the width dimension is the one that compensates for the change from non-square pixels to square pixels. The frame rate remains at 29.97 frames per second, since Particle Illusion can work with that frame rate. Because I dragged the footage to the new composition icon to create the comp, the duration is automatically set to match the length of the footage, which is what I want. Click OK to save the changes. To get a quick appreciation for the changes that will be made to the footage when the exporting square comp is rendered, toggle between the exporting square comp and the ball trail's final comp. Now I'm ready to set up the render queue for export. Drag the exporting square comp to the render queue panel. Ensure that render settings shows best settings. Click on the settings text to open the render settings dialog. All of the default settings will work, but I want to emphasize that field render should be off. Things go much better in Particle Illusion using deinterlaced footage. And although Particle Illusion can deinterlace the footage for you, when given a choice, you should always deinterlace in After Effects. Separating the fields of interlaced footage is one of After Effects' primary functions, and it is very, very good at it. Click OK. Check that the output module is set to lossless. For the lossless setting, I like to use a codec called Huff YUV. It's faster than not compressing at all, and the file sizes are smaller than uncompressed. 
but it's the speed of the codec that I like the most. I'll select Huff YUV here. Click on the Format Options button, and then open the Compressor drop-down list. Select Huff YUV 2.1.1, and then click OK. Click OK again to save the output module settings. Now I'll choose a save location and an appropriate file name. Click on the text for the Output 2 setting. I'll select the existing AEBG for PI file. What an alphabet soup that is. Click Save, and then click Yes to allow the overwrite. Click the Render button to begin rendering the comp. So here we are in Particle Illusion, and I need to set up the project to accept the video background that was just exported from After Effects. To get the dimensions needed, go to View, Project Settings. Set the frame rate to 29.97. Set the stage size to 648 by 480. Verify that the Full Frame Radio button is selected and that Field Rendering is set to Off. Click OK to save the changes. Now to import the background clip. Right-click the background icon for the layer and choose Background Image. Select the AEBG for PI file and click Open. Because the footage is deinterlaced, the option to separate fields should be off. Click OK to set the video clip as the layer background. Whoa! The stage and the background clip are bigger than the current view of the stage. Right-click the stage and select Zoom to Fit. There, that's better. Now select the Star Trail 2 emitter from the library window and add it to the stage on top of the soccer ball. Click the Select arrow in the toolbar so that a second or third copy of the emitter can't be added to the stage inadvertently. Take note of where the emitter is relative to the players and the environment in the video, and be aware that the emitter is currently stationary relative to the stage since I haven't added any position keyframes for it yet. Let's scrub the clip and see what happens. Note that as the clip is scrubbed, the position of the emitter is moving relative to the players and the environment. It's not moving its position on the stage, but to the audience, the emitter appears to be in motion. Since the emitter is currently supposed to be stationary, that's a bad thing. Ideally, the emitter should stay where it was put, even as the players move around it. What's causing this illusion is the panning and tilting motion of the camera that filmed the scene. To pull off a convincing particle tracking effect, you must compensate for the camera's motion before you begin animating the emitter. To compensate for the camera's motion, you have to anchor the offset for the layer to a fixed reference point in the clip. Then, as the reference point moves in the video frame due to the motion of the camera, you add position keys for the offset to animate it so that it matches the motion of the reference point. The result is that the motion of the camera is cancelled out. Let's scrub the clip again to find a good reference point. I like the corner of the goalpost near the end of the clip, but unfortunately, it's not visible in the first part of the clip. As I scrub some more, I see a protruding branch from one of the trees in the background that stays visible and relatively distinct throughout most of the clip. I'll use the tree branch to start. It's hard to see the tip of the branch at this scale, so I need to zoom in. Animating the offset must be done accurately, otherwise you will introduce motion to the scene that is not caused by the camera or by the animated emitter. To zoom in, press the Z key and scrub in the stage to get a good zoom level. I'll use about 120%. As you can see here, you will probably also have to scroll the stage, so press the S key and adjust the stage accordingly. Return to the first frame of the clip and then select Offset in the Hierarchy window. The cursor turns into the Offset Indicator. Click on the tip of the branch to set the first position key. Patience and Determination Test Number One Setting the offset position keys is the first test of your patience and determination. 
scrub ahead in the clip until the motion of the reference point changes, for example from slow to fast or fast to slow. In this clip, that occurs at about frame 45 or 46. Set a position key on the last frame before the motion change. I'll use frame 45. Scrub between the two position keys and verify that the offset indicator remains fixed over the branch tip during all 45 frames. And it does. Zoom out to 100% and scroll again so that more of the branch's path can be seen. Scrub beyond frame 45 until the motion changes again. This time it looks like it happens at about frame 63. Set another position key and scrub between the most recent keyframes. Notice that the offset indicator doesn't remain fixed to the reference point. The only way to remedy this is with more position keys. I usually go about halfway between the two keyframes and add another position key there. If that doesn't fix the motion, as it doesn't in this case, then I pick one side of the new keyframe and go halfway again. I continue doing this until I have added enough keyframes so that the offset stays anchored to the reference point. I've finished adding position keys for the offset, but there's a new problem at frame 78. The reference point disappears off screen. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi! The problem is easy to fix, though. I'll simply choose a new reference point. Zoom the stage out to fit. Notice that the goalpost corner that I wanted to use in the first place is now in view. I'll just use that as the new reference point. Advance one frame from the previous position key and then click on the goalpost corner. Notice that the emitter jumps immediately from where it was to where it is. Why did it do that? Particle Illusion still thinks that we are using the branch tip as the reference point. We have to tell the program that we have a new reference point. Right-click the new position key on the goalpost corner and select Break. Now Particle Illusion knows that a new reference point is in use and the emitter goes back to where it belongs. Keep adding position keys as necessary until reaching the end of the clip. Play the clip to ensure that the stationary emitter in fact stays stationary throughout. As this tutorial has taken longer than I originally planned, I'm going to end this part of the tutorial here. Next time we'll animate the emitter, then export it for After Effects, where we'll add it to the final composition and polish it up so that it looks convincing. Well, at least as convincing as young children playing with a hazardous, incendiary, and probably carcinogenic object can look. See you next time.